Sarah. Hi. So I just wanted to come on quickly to talk about an idea that I've had and get your feedback. And it was around as well because you were talking about how people want to shop, you know, how we all go to a mall and it's around the holiday time and people often have money that they want to spend. And I thought there's a lot of us here. There's a lot of people I know online and I don't really know what they're selling. And what about if I did a kind of Christmas market Zoom and I got everybody to come on and they could come on for five minutes and they pay, say, $22. Half of it goes to tax teasers. Let's come forward. So it's raising money for a good cause as well. And yeah, people just you have to maybe describe something. I'm thinking less than a hundred dollars because I think there's a, a, something good about just that entry point of getting to know people and wanting something small. And so, yeah, this is my it's very last minute. I actually had the idea for a while, but sometimes I know that it's really easy to make excuses before getting something out there. So, yes, I haven't really, because the thing is so far, I've been calling myself a storyteller. And so I don't think it really matters. I can just put it out there whether I need to connect it to the storytelling theme. Not really sure. But I think as well, a lot of people struggle to kind of describe what they're doing or sell something in a short time frame. And so I thought this could be a real gift as well for other people, because other people get to hear people talking about what they sell. They get to tune in. They get to say, oh, I love the way she did that. Um, maybe I can rephrase it. So I think it could be a great lesson in itself. So that's my idea. I think it sounds really fun. I mean, the only thing you need to know when you're going to do something is like, does this light me up? Does this feel fun? Do I want to mm -hmm. do this? Do I want to try this? Like, if it feels good, great. I guess my question is, what are you really asking us for? Why did you need to know? Do you know whether it lights you up or not? Or do you, are you really asking a question because you're like, is this good from a business standpoint? Or do you think this is the best use of my time for my business? Like, what's the question you're really asking? Because if the question is, here's my idea, what do you think of that idea? I think it sounds fun, but it doesn't really matter what I think of it. So I think you might really be asking a different question because I'm not sure that you were thinking, I want to know if Kathy Heller wants to be on this call because you would have told me the date and time if you wanted to know, like, just do I want to be there or not? So I don't think you're asking, do I like it? And do I want to be a part of it? You're asking a different question, but you're not really saying the question you're asking. You're just throwing it out there. But maybe are you asking a question about, is this the best use of my time? Is this the best offer that I should be putting my time into? But as far as like, if this is a fun thing to do, it does sound fun. And it sounds like you're having fun describing it. So I would say from that standpoint, why not do it? It sounds beautiful. But is there another question that you're asking that you just didn't really ask? Um, I don't, originally, I was going to do it all for charity. And so then like, you know, give all the money away. And then I kind of thought, okay, no, you know, why am I doing it all? Should I not have something for the time and energy and effort that I'm doing? Um, and I don't know whether this is a big thing for other people, I suppose. If you do something and you're putting it to a cause or it really matters for other people, um, because I am also getting to a point where I need to start like financially bringing in money as well. So those are all factors that I've been thinking about. I mean, this is just so juicy. And Colleen, I feel like we need to like, put a little oomph into the end of this call here. Okay. Because I am not loving how often you guys have this trend of saying, I say you guys, just because us, us people here together in this mastermind, how often you will go to, I'm going to charge less, or I'm not going to charge anything. And then what follows is like, I really am at a place where I need to make money. It's like, why then what the hell is going on with the money? What is happening with the not here, here, here? Let's get really basic. If something is not part of our experience, we are not allowing it to be. So if money is not happening in our experience, we're not allowing it. If we're not allowing it, it's because it doesn't feel safe. There's a thought, there's a feeling that we don't allow it in like, oh my God, what does that mean about me? Oh, uh, all that stuff. Okay. Otherwise it's happening right? If it's not happening, you know, people who've been single, like 
someone was going to set my friend up with this guy and he's never been in a relationship and he's 55 and he's gorgeous. And I'm like, do you want to touch that? Because <laughs> he has not been in a relationship and he's that gorgeous and he's 55 and he's never been engaged, never been married. Blah, 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 blah. Like he hasn't allowed that in to his experience. Something about that does not feel safe to him or else he would have had it. Okay. So someone who gets in there is going to have to deal with what he hasn't allowed in. Like the, just, just know you're going into that. Okay, great. So it's not all like, oh, let's put our feet up. We are allowing it in or we're not period. I don't care. Well, he was busy. He's a surgeon. Oh, no, that's not it. Okay. That's not it. He has some mom issue or something going on and we know it. That's it. Okay. So if you're saying to me, should I do this? I don't know. I'm like, I want to know what's in your bank account first. How full is it? Is it oozing out? Because when it's full, you should give 10% away, period. To feel spiritually aligned. This is a Kabbalistic idea. It's in every wisdom tradition. Give some of that shit away. Get rid of it. It's not all yours. Move it on, okay? Great. But if you're like, I'm barely, fit. it's like, where? no, this is not the way. This is not the way, right? So what is going on with the money? Why are we not allowing ourselves to have the money? Why is it like blood money? It's all so laden with like the cost of having money is like my integrity, who I am, how people see me, right? Colleen, I just want you to weigh in on this. I think we need to have a few minutes of this conversation before we get off. Yeah, well, it's fascinating, Sarah, because when you were describing it, I mean, I'm all here for fun. But even as you were describing it before we started talking about this money, I was like, so how is she going to make money from this? Like, is, yeah. like, you know what I mean? Was where my thought was going. Show me the money. <laughs> Show me the money, right? And not that everything's about the money, but like you said, I'm not making any money. And so it's like, there's level in which, well, it is. Cause I think that would feel really good to you if there was just an abundance flowing in. So I guess the question I have for you is, in these last couple months, like with your storytelling or whatever, what's coming up? How often are you making offers? What's happening when you're making offers? Like what's just give us a little quick summary. What's going on? And while you do that, I want everyone in the chat to answer this question. And I want you to answer it. Honestly, just a snapshot on today's date of December 13th, today, December 13th, right now, currently put it in the chat. What offer is public for people to purchase? What are you offering and how much is it? And is it out there? Is it in the link in bio? Have you sent it to 10 people? Did you mention on your podcast today? What offer do you currently have today to receive from people vis-a-vis -vis your gifts that you're sharing? What is your offer? How much? Be really honest. I'm just so curious. What are you available to receive today based upon anything that has to do with a business? Just Let's just take the barometer. Please put it in the chat. And Sarah, you can answer as well. Put the amount of money. So this is great, Kristen, great. VIP day, 12 week package. What's the amount of money? What does it say out there? What can people pay you? Your retreat, Jen, is $6,000. She said, I have only promoted it twice on my IG stories and once in a post, haven't sent it. Okay, right now available to see $75 for a custom holiday platter. Do you guys see this? When you, just step back for a second. When you ask yourself, damn it, I want to make, what would feel really good to me? It's like, I want to make 26 million a year. That would feel great. You know, that would feel so good. Or I want to make 785,000 this year. It's like whatever amount you want to make and then look at it, just take a snapshot and go, is there any way for that to happen today based upon a business? Now, can you be a vibe? Can you just waltz right into all the different ways that you stumble onto like, hey, you want to invest? My dad was once asked in 1980, whatever, a guy came to him and said he was making a movie. It was Rain Man. And he was like, it's a movie about a thing. My dad's a psychologist and his friend of a friend was making it. He's like, do you want to invest in it? It was like nothing to invest in it. That would have been a great investment. Can you walk into moments like that? Of course you can. But from the standpoint of having a business and being a boss, which we all like being a boss, we want to share our gifts. We like being in business. It's fun. You don't really want to put your feet up and like drink margaritas all day long. You like this idea of being a business. How the hell are you going to get to the $785,000 or the 4 million or the 26 million when there's no way for people to pay you what you want today? It doesn't exist. It's not even out there. And why is it not out there? 
Who are you protecting? Who are you? What, what, what is being protected? Right? So if you're looking through this, it's like, just do the math, add it up. If it's a $75 offer, or if it's a $6,000 offer, but you mentioned it twice in your stories and the math, math is great because it's very clean. It's just math. If the stories are shown to 5% of the algorithm of the people who follow you, and how many people saw your stories? So how many people even know that it's out there? And what was the resonance and energy in which you conveyed that offer? Okay, so now what, <laughs> right? So it's like, how could you, how could you get to that amount if it's not even possible for people to add to cart? And why, right? So Colleen, are you reading through this? Well, actually what I'm most fascinated by, and I say this with so much love, is all of you who haven't typed in the chat yet. <laughs> and I don't think it's because you're still typing because Kathy was talking for a while there. So what is it shame that's coming up for you? Is it embarrassment? Is it I don't even have an offer? It's okay. You can say, I don't even know what my offer is. Like literally in this moment, commit to just allowing and accepting what is, because whatever is, 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 but there's no point in turning away from it because th then there's resistance. So give yourself the gift of just claiming wherever your reality is. Okay, so as we're looking at that, we're going to come back to that in a second. But Sarah, what's the offer that you have out there today or lack thereof? Just tell us plainly. You're not going to be in trouble. Uh, we're here to help. Yeah. You know, oh, we're I just know. here to help. Um, I've just finished one group coaching course, which I really loved and was really awesome. And I'm going to repeat that in the new year. Um, and that is 444. And then I'm also doing another. I've kind of been telling people, but I've decided to postpone them a bit. Another group coaching course in the new year that's going to be a 12 week one, um, and that's 888. And so those are ones that I'm kind of, I haven't really put out there big time yet. Um, and then on this side as well, I'm doing deep dives um, into storytelling, like a one on one hourly session um, at 244. So first of all, and where do you have those out there? Where can people see those? They can't right now because I'm going to launch them in the new year. But I've told a few people. Okay, you guys, this is as simple as X's and O's. This has to change. You cannot do this. You cannot open a shop on Main Street and keep it closed 11 months out of the year, you will not be in business. That's not a business, you guys. This is not a business. Okay, so it needs to be open for business every single day. You teach people to pay you. If they go to your Instagram, if they go to your website, if they come to a party, if they meet you, if you're, if you're introduced through a friend and they happen to find out what you do and you don't have something for them to buy, they will go buy it from someone else. And once they do, they will start being enrolled in paying that other person. They will start to trust them. They will start to go back to them. The, the, the businesses most people have are from repeat business. Those are the clients. Bobby Brown makeup, people wear that makeup for 40 years. They don't just switch to Chanel. They might have like a MAC lipstick, but they have their thing. They have their clients. They have their buyer. That's their person. You have a realtor. She works with you on six homes over 20 years. You don't switch that often. When you don't have something to sell, the person who is your client, who's looking for that anyway, they're going to buy it from someone else and you are missing time. You are missing daylight. Okay. So this is X's and O's. This is so simple. So this has to be out there. There has to be an offer, a way for people to pay you every single day, even if it's small, there's gotta be a way. And then you rinse and repeat a big launch, right? We do a launch four to six times a year. You do that launch, people go, that's Kathy Heller. That's what she does. That's what she says. There she is again, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. And people will come through launches like three times. You're like, I've done this launch three times. I'm finally buying. It's like, great. They, they just needed a longer time. They needed more foreplay. That's okay, right? And some of them don't ever buy. That's okay too. Maybe they just start listening to the podcast. Maybe that's where they're at. Maybe they're never gonna buy. doesn't matter. But the people who are gonna buy 
know where to get what they need. And you're not doing it. You're not doing anyone any favors by charging so little, you guys. It's not a vibe. You get to decide. Do you want to be the most accessible, cheap thing in town? Please don't decide to be Walmart. It's not sexy. It's not abundant. People don't go to Walmart for the best. They go for easy. They go for commodities that are thrown away. Okay. And there are days where you're having a party and you go to Costco and you get 12 plastic plates and you throw them away and you move on. But that's not really a vibe. People don't get excited about the purchases. They don't hold on to those things as heirlooms in their life. They don't tell you how it changed them as a person. There's no branding in it. It's a freaking warehouse. There's no lighting. It's all fluorescent light bulbs. It's, there's no good music. It's just like, it's, it's just a factory. It's not, it's not a vibe. You want to be the, the most expensive, most valuable. So now on your way to most expensive, most valuable, maybe you meet somewhere in the middle. But right now, what you guys are sharing for the most part, the way you're sharing it, you're either not really sharing it or you're sharing it and you're just basically pricing it so low. Like with Paige from Aviator Nation, I said to her, how did you decide to sell the sweatshirt for $198? Because that is definitely on the high end of a hoodie. And she said, because most of the people I knew told me that you would look at the cost of materials and then you would double it for the wholesale price and you would double the wholesale price for to know what the retail price was. And she said, except that most people don't pay themselves. So for the, they just pay for the materials and double the price of the materials for the wholesale price, double that for retail. She's like, what about paying yourself? She's like, I was making $19 at the surf shop. So how many hours did it take me to design the sweatshirt, to go source the goods, to put the stuff together, to sew the goods? Like I added what I paid myself plus the materials, doubled that was the wholesale price, doubled that was the retail price. And because I was sourcing it in the United States, I wasn't going to China for synthetic ingredients. I was, she built a factory eventually in California, but even in the beginning, she was using all products from here. So they're softer sweatshirts. It's softer. It's all, it's, it's quality. She's like, I wanted it to be quality and that's where it was. And there will always be a buyer at every price. There's plenty of people who are in enough of their resistance that they will not pay a lot of money for coaching. Why do you have to choose that person? That's actually a harder person to serve. And there's plenty of people that will go to a fancy restaurant knowing that the meal is literally going to be this big. The plate is going to come with like all these little pesto, little like, you know, rings and like one dollop of tuna tartare. And they're like, great. That's what I wanted. I want to spend $500 on a meal where I'm still hungry at the end because I want the experience. Or they can go to the Sizzler and load up their plate. Their plate is full. And they feel so full after and so empty. Some people don't want that experience for $7 all you can eat. Some people don't want all you can eat for $7 because they don't want to feel full of shit. You guys are gold. You have the ability to move people into something so much bigger, but you, are, you have to set down what you're charging. Cause there's not a lot of charge in meeting people from, you know, why I'm only going to charge you four, 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 or what did you say was the 12 week price? What was the 12 week price? What did she say? Eight, 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 eight. So 12 weeks of coaching for less than a thousand dollars. I mean, think about that. If you went to a therapist and they said, I will meet with you. We're doing a group group therapy. And we meet for 12 weeks and it's less than a thousand dollars. What is that therapist being paid an hour? But if you go to John Gottman and you want to go to his retreat, he does a couple's retreat on Orcas Island where he lives near kind of where Colleen used to live off the coast of Seattle. It's $8,000 for two days. Well, why? Because in the book Blink, Malcolm Gladwell opens the book talking about John Gottman. He says, Gottman can look at a couple for 90 seconds and tell you exactly whether they're going to get divorced or not based on three little things he can pick up in the way they look at each other. Well, some people would rather hold on to their money and waste all their time. So they'll be like, you know what's more important to me? Money. I value money, not time. Time's not that important. So what I'm going to do is go to a sort of a 
you know, I'm going to think I'm going to therapy, but I'm not really going to get the therapy I need. And I'll do it for years as opposed to taking the money that's less valuable than the time and giving John Gottman $8,000 so he can spend two days with me and set me straight. It shouldn't even be $8,000. It should be $150,000. You know how much money I've spent on therapy? I don't go to therapy anymore. It doesn't work. He works. He does something totally different, right? It's magic. So what do you want to be? Who do you want to be? Do you want to be Seth Godin? Or do you want to be the lady on the corner who's like, come into my psychic shop. It's $15. I'll tell you your future. Who trusts her? Who wants to go to her? She's like smoking a cigarette in this like dimly lit room. And it's like taking people off the street. You can just, it's just a vibe. We don't realize you don't want to be the sizzler. You don't want to be anywhere close to that, right? Because you really want to help people. Well, if you really want to help people, you have to be willing to say, this Range Rover costs $110,000. And I'm going to give you the opportunity to step into that. I'm going to give you the opportunity to decide that that's a possibility for your life. I'm not going to meet you in this place where you don't have to set down your scarcity. I just refuse to meet you there. I can't meet you there. Where do you really want to take people? Because it's just energy right? It's just a new frontier that you get to show and hold and invite them into. And right now, if you're not charging what really makes you feel lit and it's not out there, then there's no way people can access a new level of reality vis-a-vis -vis you. They can't. It's not even there. Is this making sense? So I love that we're talking about this because as Colleen said, it's fine to do that idea. That's fine. But what do you really want to focus your energy on? And I think this thing needs to be dealt with first. You know, I want you all to tell me I'm allowing this in here. I'm allowing this in here. And this is happening over here. You know, I'm so excited. I'm going to make a million bucks this year. Now I'm making two. Now I'm making four. Now I'm making nine great. If it feels great, stop it too. If it feels easy, go to a hundred. It doesn't matter. It's just a resource. It's just energy. It's just a ball. It's just a possibility you're holding for other people. So where's your offer, right? For all of you, it's like, if now let me ask it to you again, what can you change it to from where it is? How much more can you charge and where can you put that? If you set down operating from what will they think? What will they feel? And I don't want to deal with people's egos who can't afford more. It's like, choose a different person who can actually hear you. Colleen, what do you want to say about all this? That I think you're really gifted at what you do, Sarah. And you can see it in the comments from people who've been on the receiving end specifically of your coaching. And you need to freaking claim that and own it and step forward in it. And it's, there's an aspect of which sometimes we go, oh, okay, well, I have that three month program or however long it is. I think that's what we said. And then it's like, I'll offer that again in January. It's like, great. But you could be booking people into a high level VIP experience or some like one-on-one -on -one thing, or you could be pre-selling. We're pre-selling AEA. Like we pre-sold AEAs and like freak, I don't know, the end of October, right? There's there's ways to pay Kathy, even though we're not in launching and it's all there. So it's almost like I agree that I feel like, yes, this holiday thing is fun. And it's also a distraction from you putting the emphasis on yourself as the star, because you have so much to offer and you're, you're the main attraction. You're the draw. Like, let's let people realize how much they need to step in and choose you. I just did the math. I mean, it's not hard math to do, but if you charge 888 for 12 weeks, it's $74 a week, $74 for that level of coaching a session. It's simply not even market. That's like you actually, let me just, and by the way, the reason I get really harsh like this is to love you back into yourself, right? I got to wake you up. It's like Tony Robbins will say at the beginning of his workshops, he's like, I'm going to curse all day because I'm actually trying to activate this part of you. He's like, but I actually don't even curse this often. Like when you meet him, he's more like, 
we, I, you know, I had him on the show and he's like, Oh, so good to meet you. Like, he's like a church goer. Like, but he goes, I get into coaching. I'm like, fuck that motherfucker. Like he like wants to wake people up. So I don't necessarily curse, but I want to like wake you up. So I'm going to tell you something in a harsh way to just try to help. When you guys charge $74 a week for a coaching experience, you are fucking with the market. Okay. We live in this house in Brentwood. Eventually, maybe you guys will come for a retreat. We'll tell you about that later. We're going to have more, more retreats as opposed to the way we were doing mastermind before. But the point is, if my neighbor put her house on the market for $1 million, she's, she's screwing me. It's not a $1 million house. There's nothing in Brentwood for a million dollars. Maybe a porta potty. It doesn't exist. Okay. It's not okay. It's not even market. It's not even low end of the market. Like if she wanted to put the house on the market, this house next to us, it's like a small, cute little ranch house. It's been there. It needs to probably be like knocked down. If she wanted to put that on the market for 4 million. It's still really low. She probably can't. You know what I mean? There's a precedent. There's, there's, there's square footage. There's what it is. It's like coaching is not $74 a week. What is that? That doesn't even exist in the coaching space. Like it, it, it can't, not for this, right? It doesn't even exist. It's not even a thing. And the look on your face, which by the way, I've been there. I know what that feels like. At every point in my career, there's always a next level for me, right? So I know what that feels like. That look on your face, I'll tell you exactly what that is. It's holding what all these people think and what all these people can afford. And you just need to allow into your audience, a different audience or the same audience who's being called up to a different place. Right? If people wanna go see Adele in concert and they can't afford to spend $190 even on the cheapest ticket, that is okay. They can listen to her on Spotify. But if she's going to walk away from her life and her family and go on tour, there has to be a certain level of reciprocity. And for those people, it has to make a certain amount of money. So this just has to be like, it is actually X's and O's. It is so simple. It's like, put it out there say it this way, call people up, charge more money, call in the person you can actually help, play in the market. This is all not market. This is all just a codependent way to think you're in business, but you're actually, and this is why it's exhausting. And this is why you're like, I don't know how to make more money. It's like, you're not available right now. You're just currently not available to make more money. So what do you think you could charge instead of 888? What would just feel so good? Like if I waved a magic wand and told you there were 15 women right now who said, hell yes, they're in, what would you want them to pay you? $1,200 a month. Okay. For sure, you're right. There's an element of when thinking about prices, you know, is this something that other people can afford? Is this something that people will pay for at this price? You know, and I think because I'm starting a business, I've not been doing this that long. I feel that I want to build up my prices because it's about the confidence I have selling whatever I'm selling. You know, I, if I don't have the confidence selling at that price, I'm not going to be able to say that when I'm talking about what I'm talking about. You know, yeah. if the stickiness with me, whereas if I sell it at a lower price, I'm like, this is a great deal. You're going to get loads of value from this. And I genuinely will feel that at that price. And so it's easier for me to sell at those prices with, well, this is you know, my from favorite. a resonance. This is literally my favorite. I'm just, it's, it's so good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for saying it and saying it just like that. Did you hear what you just said? It's not sticky yeah. for me. It's not sticky for me if I sell it at this lower price. You know why? You can be codependent there. And that feels really comfortable. When you sell at a lower price, you can stay in your lane of being responsible for how other people think and feel and being in somewhat of a feeling of control. It feels so good. When all that is is sticky. When you sell at a higher price, 
you're giving other people autonomy. Mm -hmm. So you're no longer actually sticky and that feels really uncomfortable. So you're like, no, it's not confidence. It's actually being clean and unattached. It's the opposite of well, it is confidence, but it's not confidence from a place of I can sell it. What you make it sound like is like, I won't be able to sell it, which is the opposite of confidence. It's proving yourself, feeling worthy of it. That is the opposite. By being able to charge more, you're dropping, selling it and needing to be confident. There's nothing for you to prove when you sell it at a higher price because you're calling people up to what's possible for them and letting them decide for themselves and not being sticky. And then they can feel, she doesn't need me either way. Of course you don't. Newsflash, no one needs other people to decide how they feel or how they vibrate every day. That's on us. Colleen, you, you've said this exact thing before when people say, oh, I'll just inch my way up, right? Until I feel confident. What do you, what do you have to say about that? Well, I think... You wind up, it, it's like the elusive like chasing of something is what winds up happening because there's never going to come a moment where you actually feel comfortable because you're always going to be apart from where you really want to be charging. Do you know what I mean? You're going to get to that level and you're going to be like, what I really want to charge is 10 grand, but now I'm ready to charge four. And what I really, and so you're always denying yourself the opportunity to just be your fully expressed self and put it the frick out there and be okay with only one person joins or two person joins because this is the whole thing. Everyone goes into the, but then no one will join and that's embarrassing and that's full of shame. And it says something about how good I am and it's this and it's this, but if I have a track record and I have people and it's, trust me, those people won't be a track record you want to have because they're going to do F all because that's usually what happens when they buy in at a lower rate. So it's, an illusion. It's all just an illusion. So just start charging and be willing to be uncomfortable because the comfortable moment is never going to come. It doesn't happen. You just have to decide I'm going to be really freaking uncomfortable and I'm going to keep offering this. And then maybe I'll pivot a bit, but I'm pretty much going to keep offering it and keep trying and see where I'm led and be non-attached and keep immersing myself with people like, I don't know, Nancy left a comment. She's like, oh my God, your session was so helpful. Right. She's like, I'll give you a testimonial. Great. Loop back with Nancy. Like throw that up on, like, just keep going. And Sarah, I have news for you. There are people, lots of them who think that 888 is disgusting. They think you should be ashamed of yourself. There are people that think that $500 for coaching from you based on whatever. Blah, blah, blah. They think it's outrageous. What are you going to do about it? You need to send them an apology? There are people three, four years ago, I can't remember, it was before the pandemic, I bought myself for Valentine's Day a new BMW, an X7. And I... They put a bow on it for me and I posted with my daughters and I was like, it's so fun to like walk into a shop and the woman's like, oh, where's your husband? You know, they always want your husband to be there when you buy a house or when you wait till he comes. And I'm like, he's not buying me the fucking car, I'm buying it for myself, right? <laughs> like newsflash. <laughs> it's funny. It's really funny. Like when I go to the beach club, Colleen and Boca, they give it to my husband. Like he's not even on the membership. He's a guest on the membership. I pay for it. Hand me the thing. It's so funny. And it's not really funny. It's just based on statistics. It's based on life. It's fine. They're not doing anything wrong. They just assume. When I posted that, I got people who were like, it's disgusting that you bought yourself a car. That's a hundred thousand dollars. Oh my God. I need to write her an apology. She's right. How many other people gather around anyone who thinks that it's like, you, you get it right. Like there are people who have a whole trip and they are convinced that the reason they're unhappy or the reason they're in lack is because of this and this and this, that's all happening outside of them. And they have no choice in it. And it's all everyone's fault. So what in the actual hell? There are people who won't buy a book for $20. They're going to wait for it to be on audiobook because they don't, they don't think it's worth it. I mean, you can't put an end to this. It doesn't stop. It's not your business. It's not. Mm -hmm. 
it's not your business. There are people who, who get really, really angry. And I've heard this conversation, like, can you believe that it, go, it costs, now it's $150 to go to Disney World per person? How outrageous, how does it, you're still going. Why are you going then? Don't go. It's like, I mean, there are people who say this about everything. I, I'm, I'm, it doesn't matter. And then there are people who go, gosh, I live in this abundant playground. If I want that BMW, I'll go get it. How cool that the universe works that way and I'm in it too. How fun that I could actually not just go to Disney. I can create a situation where I take 20 people to Disney. I'm taking 12 people to Pentatonix on Thursday night. It cost me over $4,000 for tickets. It was a joy to buy those seats. A joy. I am obsessed with this band. It's religious for me. I'm like, oh my God. It's like going to the Vatican. I love them. I am a freak when it comes to their music. I happily spent $4,000 on tickets for two hours of my life. And I want to take 12 people with me. No, I don't say to the pentatonic, you know, it's really gross. I'm like, God bless you. They're just like moonlight. It's like looking at the moon. Looking at the moon. So good. You know, when Meryl Streep is, Streep is cast in a movie, it's not $800. It's like $20 million. And people say, it's really gross. Okay. Have someone else do it. Let's go back. Let's watch Kramer versus Kramer with somebody else in it. Enjoy it. Have that. Tell that story that way. You don't need her. Get somebody else. There's always someone who is cheaper. That's fine. Not interested. She's not interested. If you're not going to pay her, what she really feels is worth her time to leave her gorgeous children and her husband. They have this beautiful family. You're going to have to pay through the nose for it. And it's okay if you don't want to. People are like, well, you're just an actor. It's like, okay. Get whatever fucking actor you want. You choose it. I know what I do. I respect what I do. I respect too much what you do. And this story needs to be told this way or else I don't want to be in it. Right? Remember when the cast of Friends renegotiated and they were like, we want a million dollars an episode. David Schwimmer was offered that. And he's like, I'm only getting a million if everyone else is getting a million. And then the network was like, this is unprecedented. Nobody gets this. It's like, okay, tell me the last time there was a, there was a sitcom show that did anything close to what they did for TV. You better pay for it. Yeah, that was that. That was actually it. Friends went off the air. Does anyone watch a TV show anymore? Does anyone really watch TV? They were our best friends. They felt so <laughs> much reciprocity. They showed up for that job. And we all got to be part of that. My kids don't even know what TV is. Like they're like, they watch things on YouTube. Like, I'm like, we used to gather around the TV on Thursday night and be like, oh, I'm so happy right now. Like, it was like out of this world. I don't watch any TV anymore. What do you guys want to make? What world do you want to be in? Think about it. Think about the people who've actually served you. They felt re reciprocity. That's why you enjoyed it. They were full. That's why the work was good, right? Picasso lived to see himself be a gazillionaire, okay? That's why the work is good. Or don't be Picasso. Make something for Ikea. They'll sell it for $15. You'll make 20 cents on the dollar. And those people at Ikea, they won't think you're a jerk but they won't talk about you in a hundred years, right? You want to buy a Chagall? You want to buy a Picasso? You better hawk your house, but people will talk about it. They'll be like, oh my God, that's amazing. I can't believe that piece of art. It's so gorgeous. You walk through the MoMA. You can't even speak looking at a Monet. You have to, you have to be quiet. You have to whisper. You don't even know why you're whispering, but you're like, this is so beautiful. Nobody feels that walking through Z Gallery. They talk. They talk loudly in there. They bring milkshakes in there. They leave them on the counter. You could be a Z Gallery. It's fine. 
what is it, $400 for a, a print? Get it, fill up your house with it. And people will still say, oh, the gallery is more than Target. Shut your fucking mouth. It's like, what is all this? There's always going to be those people. You either leave a legacy or you vote. You want everybody's vote. You sell yourself for everybody's vote. And then what do you do? What do you make then? Right? So where do you guys really want to be playing? What altitude do you want to play at? What content? What value? What do you want to exchange? What do you want to teach people is the meaning of abundance and value? And what do you want to not teach people? And how much do you need every single person to feel okay about what you do, right? How does that really help them? How does that really call them up? $74 a week for coaching is probably not it. So does anybody want to change their offer? And anybody who doesn't have your offer out there, this is why. So can you put it out there? Can you put it out there? Colleen, are you, are you thinking anything else you want to share before we get off? I went over a little bit, A, because we're going to be gone for three weeks and B, because this conversation is so good, but we're going to wrap up now. I just really want everyone to take this to heart. And so when you get off this call, where are you putting that offer up? And I don't care if you're like, well, I'm not quite sure. Is it this is, just pick something, anything, and just put it up and get in the habit of like the door is always open 24 seven. It's available. You can change it. It doesn't matter if you're like, I'm not sure. I don't care if you're not sure. Or you're like, oh, but I got to wait on this. No, 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 no. Pick something you don't have to wait on. Like anything. There's something right now every single one of us could do or offer. And so give yourself the gift of just creating that opening. Sarah, let's end this with you. <clears throat> Where can you go from here? What feels like your next right step? Not based upon what I want to hear, but based upon whatever you just got and where you could actually move to. Like, where do you think you can go? You said $1,200 a month. That's like $3,600 over a three-month period. Yeah, it that still feels like quite a lot, but I do see at the same time that what Colleen said is that it's never gonna feel that comfortable I think I've been waiting for it to feel comfortable and sitting in a price that feels really comfortable but that's the way that we don't really I'm realizing create a business that's the way we keep playing at a hobby and then we get this feeling of dissatisfaction because we're not getting the outcome we want which you know has its own um, vortex I think so I definitely feel like putting out more offers and having something on a constant basis because like you said as well people will go somewhere else there's other people out there and I genuinely care a lot about people and I want them to shift in a way you know and they could go and I believe this they can go to someone else who doesn't care as much as me and so if that is really true then I need to put something that's available and, and show people that I'm here for them and that I'm the person that they should invest in because then that's an investment in themselves. And right. so that needs to be reflected in the price. Yeah. And those same people, first of all, are going to get so much out of being with you when you're just in resonance that they're not going to get when you're in this other place, you're going to be withholding a lot. That's not really then worth the cost exchange. Do you know what I mean? But when you step forward into this, you can actually pull them forward more because you're coming from strength, not coming from this codependent place. And those same people who you think will have a hard time, you know, paying for things. I guarantee you those people, if you ask them for Christmas, if they want a fake Louis Vuitton or a real one, they want a real one. And most of those people at some point bought the real version of whatever the Louis Vuitton desire is for them. Most of those people splurged on the iPhone or splurged on the shoes here and there and love it. They don't really want the fake one. They don't want it for less. They think that they do in the moment, but they're not buying price. They're buying how they feel. And you just get to move it. It's just as simple as like picking up this water. But this was an amazing call. Anyway, there was so much good that came out of it. And I hope that you guys have ease and joy and play with this, play with this, 
play with. You want to give yourself a gift for the holiday? It doesn't cost money for you to give this to yourself. It's called freedom. It's called authentic power. It's called no longer being on the hook to know what people think and feel about you. Put your offers out there. Let's try it. Like Colleen said, play with it. Put it out in the world and see how you feel going into 2023, giving yourself integrity. Okay, so we will see you first Tuesday. Tuesday, yeah. yeah. January, whatever it is. Okay, we'll see you guys soon. Lots of love.